As devastating droughts threaten regions across the world, scientists have proposed a solution that sounds like science fiction. If the water doesn't come during the winter in the form of snowfall, and doesn't come during the spring in the form of rain, what if we just make it rain? Literally. While this may seem like a far-fetched fix, this idea is actually based on technology that's been around since the 1940s. It's called cloud seeding, and it is what it sounds like. Tiny particles are released into the air, either by an aircraft or an automated machine, and this technique relies on the answer to one key question. Where do clouds come from? The simple answer is that clouds have nuclei, but not the kind that atoms have. Water evaporates into the atmosphere as part of the water cycle, and that evaporated water accumulates around micro-scale solid or liquid particles made of dust or pollen, or even bacteria. And these are called condensation nuclei. As more and more water vapor clings onto a condensation nucleus, it starts to form into a cloud droplet. And once the cloud droplets get big and heavy enough, they fall from the cloud in the form of precipitation. And that can be rain, snow, even hail. The scientists who came up with the idea of cloud seeding assumed that the limiting factor to how big clouds get, or how likely it is that they'll precipitate, is these condensation nuclei. So they decided to add some. They chose silver iodide particles because its crystal structure is assumed to be very similar to that of real ice, providing a scaffold for water to cling onto. And adding these particles to growing clouds can help water vapor freeze around those nuclei at higher temperatures than it would naturally, making precipitation come faster. And after its invention, cloud seeding was widely adopted. It was put to work by the US government, most notably during the Vietnam War, with the goal of flooding enemy supply routes. But then in the 1970s, the UN adopted a resolution to ensure that all of its member states would only ever use weather modification, like cloud seeding, for peaceful purposes from then on. So it may sound like a simple and effective solution. Just make more clouds to make more rain, right? But there are actually four main pitfalls that mean we gotta turn the tap off on that excitement for a second. One, we still don't really know if it works, or if it does work, how effective it is. See, once you've seeded a cloud, it's really tough to say how much precipitation that cloud would have yielded if you hadn't seeded it. One recent study did find that some seeding produced snow where it wouldn't have fallen otherwise, but the amount of snow was negligible. And in areas where precipitation was expected, it's still really hard to say if seeding makes a difference either way in what would have fallen naturally. We also don't actually know how water vapor forms around condensation nuclei into those cloud droplets in the first place. Although there is a lot of really interesting research into this right now, like molecular modeling stuff, but there's just still a lot of unknowns. Problem number two is that you can only seed clouds that are already there. You can't make clouds appear out of thin air. There has to be enough water vapor in the air already for cloud seeding to work. So in extremely dry areas or places already devastated by drought, this isn't much of a fix. Three, we don't yet fully understand the implications of adding these seeding chemicals to our water cycle. Take silver iodide, for example. Silver is toxic to many aquatic organisms in large doses, so we're gonna need to monitor the level of these compounds that may make their way into the water cycle. While dry ice and potassium chloride and other compounds can also be used for cloud seeding depending on the situation, the environmental effects of these will need to be considered too. And four, does cloud seeding upset the balance of nature even more than climate change induced drought already has? Some scientists are worried that increasing the volume of clouds in one place will actually pull moisture from somewhere else interrupting rain that could have fallen there instead. But again, the dynamics at play in clouds are so complex that it's really hard to say where rain would have fallen if we had left everything alone. The fact remains that by 2030, almost half of the world's population will live in a highly water-stressed area due to climate change. 
and at least 52 countries all over the world, the US, China, India, Russia, have already invested in weather modification technology with the hope of bending the weather to their will. So while we investigate if and exactly how cloud seeding may be able to help, it's important to remember that it's just a band-aid. Experts say that if these strategies are seriously considered as a drought solution, they're gonna have to be part of a larger plan that also involves smart water management. And even if things like cloud seeding may be able to help, they treat a symptom, not the cause. So to ensure long lasting solutions to droughts worldwide, change that will actually make a fundamental difference, we're gonna have to address the root causes of the climate crisis too. If this video left you thirsty for more info on clouds, then check out this other video on cloud complexity here and let us know down in the comments below what else you wanna learn about weather modification. Subscribe to Seeker to keep up with all of your news on weather and climate. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.